Hey everybody. I know that when we left for spring break we really didn't anticipate the situation where we'd have to stay home through the duration of the school year. That said, many of you guys probably don't have much by the way of art supplies at home right now. You might have a number two pencil or a mechanical pencil, probably a few ballpoint pens, but not much else. So here's a tutorial on drawing an eye with a ballpoint pen. So here we go. So as always, you want to start by using a pencil. I happen to have an H here, but if you've got any kind of light pencil, use that to draw your outline. As always, you want to start by drawing a mini grid with just four parts, and then follow along with me the best that you can. Feel free to pause the video after watching a little bit to allow yourself to catch up, and of course, rewind and fast forward as necessary. Some parts of the video are going to be sped up after having been explained. In total, this took me about an hour and a half to complete. Um, I did take a couple breaks here and there. Um, so allow yourself about that much time, if not a little bit longer, to get this done. And obviously you're home working on this, so it doesn't have to be done all in one sitting. One of the most important things to remember about drawing photorealism is that you need to completely forget your brain's preconceived notions about what the object actually looks like. Just follow the outlines exactly as you see them, even if they look weird at first. Once you add shading, it's all going to work out. So make sure that you're just paying attention to the proportions, what's happening in each quadrant of this grid, and go from there. So it looks like I might have made that top part a little too high there, so I'm just going to lower it a little bit and then erase what I've got on top carefully. Make sure not to smudge anything else as I'm fixing that. Drawing the iris can be one of the most frustrating parts about drawing an eye, but it's really the most important thing that your iris is as close to a perfect circle as possible, and that's really hard to do. Some of your iris might be covered by the eyelid, like in this case, so you have to treat it as though that part was just either sliced off or imagine that it's just underneath the eyelid. So within the iris, we want to make sure that we're drawing out all the little shiny spots that are going to show up in our eye. This is what makes it look realistic more than anything else. So make sure that you're mapping them out carefully. Once those are done, you can go ahead and draw in the pupil. Remember, it needs to be set up like the bullseye of a target, so right in the center with equal distance to the outer part of the iris all the way around. If this is at all off, it can totally mess up your drawing. So now there's some details that I'm seeing in my resource image that I'm drawing in. At this point, I'm just mapping out important spots on the iris for me to pay attention to when I start to do my shading. So I'm just going to speed through this part, putting in the rest of the details around the iris and then on the outer part of the eye, the eyelid, things like that. Feel free to pause this at any point so that you can get caught up and then rewind it and fast forward it if you need to. Okay, so here's my ballpoint pen from our favorite Thai place around the corner from City High. You can really use any type of ballpoint pen. The thing about these is that the amount of pressure you apply will make a difference in how light or dark your markings are, whereas when we do the pen drawing project at school, it's either black or white. So what's nice with these is you can get a nice gray value. You could also do this drawing in blue ink or some other color ink, depending on what you have available, and see how it comes out. My quarantine supplies are limited, however, so I'm working with black today. You're going to start by filling in the pupil as dark and solid as you can get it by using either little circles or cross-hatching or scribbling. Just make sure that you are not creating any sort of texture in there and getting it to be as flat as possible. So now what I like to do is go in and fill in some of the more dark and solid parts in the iris right now, um, like around the edges, uh, on the little details where I see that it's really, really dark. I'm going to do that. And um, now I'm going to start using little bits of hatching to fill in some of those spaces because now is when I want to start to create some texture. 
Anywhere where it's completely solid, you just want to fill it in solid. But anywhere where you see some like lines and stuff, you want to put those lines in. As I was doing this, I was definitely discovering that layering is really the way to go with a ballpoint pen. So just get in the area really lightly where you want that texture to be and then just go back and forth over it and over it and over it until it's as dark as you want it. So we're going to speed this part up right now. I'm just going to fill in this whole part here uh, around the center of the iris and around the pupil. Um, but basically what you're thinking about doing is like creating value scales using hatching, coming from the inside out and then going from the outside in. Um, and there's going to be some parts that are a little bit lighter than others and some that are a little bit darker, but just pay attention to those differences and try and uh, recreate those. Okay, so that center part is pretty much done, so I'm just going to add a few more details here and there, and then clean up any excess pencil marks that I see, being careful because sometimes this type of ink can smudge. And now I'm going to go in and put some of the darker values around the outside of the iris, and just fill those in as black as I can get them. And then work on doing the same thing I did with the inside part, and just, you know, creating value scales, using hatching going from the outside in and then from the inside out. So you definitely want to be paying attention as I'm doing this. There's going to be some parts that are I'm leaving completely white. Okay, so you want to avoid those parts. So right here, there's like a little bit of a line that's going um, kind of around the inner part of the iris there. So I'm leaving that part white, um, avoiding it completely. And then later on, I'm going to go back in and fill it in just a little bit. Um, there's a little more detail, but at least for now, we want to make sure that that stays open. I would definitely suggest taking this part in chunks, like drawing a little bit, watching a little bit, drawing a little bit more, watching a little bit more. Doing it that way will definitely make it a little bit more manageable rather than watching the whole thing all at once and then attempting to draw it that way. Okay, so that is pretty much our iris and our pupil. So now we just need to erase any excess pencil marks, and then we can go in and add some of the reflections on that shiny spot in the middle there. So basically that's just reflecting some of the eyelashes that you're gonna draw in later. And then clean up any loose ends that might need a little bit of cleaning up. So now we're gonna work on the whites of the eyes, which are never actually white. So this is where your cross hatching and your hatching and your scumbling are gonna come in. So starting here, I'm just doing some hatching and making sure that I'm just layering it as much as possible in order to get the desired value, right? So the darker I want it to be, the more hatching I'm gonna do in that area. Definitely be patient with this part and don't press too hard too fast because then you're gonna get some weird lines in there. You wanna make sure that you don't have those.
So let's speed this part up a little bit here. And again, feel free to pause it as you need to. Um, usually around the iris, there's like a little bit of a shadow sort of glow situation. So I'm just doing that with some scumbling just to kind of uh, speed up the shading process. So now let's move to shading the outside part of the eye. So what we're looking at here is just the underneath part of the eyelid. So we're gonna shade that pretty dark. This right here is the crease, and then this is the eyelid right here. So again, um, contour hatching for this part and layering. Definitely layer this a lot in order to get it as dark as you want it. Okay, so now we're gonna start doing the eyelashes. And the most important thing to remember about eyelashes is to pay attention to the direction that they're growing out of the eyelid and also which way they're facing. So these ones are kind of, they first go down and then they sort of go out to the left. And eventually they'll start to change direction and get a little bit longer. But again, you kind of want to think about it doing it first, just like kind of one at a time, just to get the direction down. And you don't want them to be so consistent that they don't cross over each other or they're just like too perfect because then it just looks weird, right? So you want to make sure that they're a little random, um, but not too random so it's kind of a hard this is like definitely the hardest part about drawing an eye is getting the eyelashes right because if you don't do it right you can really make your drawing look weird so the other thing that you want to think about when drawing eyelashes is starting with like a really heavy stroke and then ending with a really thin stroke so you want your eyelashes to be thick at the bottom and really thin at the top um, and then you can go back in, which you probably will have to do with a ballpoint pen and thicken up the individual lashes that you want to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to speed this part up here um, so that you can see which direction the eyelashes are going to be going in throughout the whole drawing. And again, feel free to pause it and stop it as you need to. 